Hey friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me discussing the mid-year book freakout tag. I know, we're already halfway through 2021. Both good and bad, I'd like to say. Um, hopefully it's been mainly good for everyone, but you know, with 2021 being the year after 2020, it makes sense that there were a lot of bad too. Let's just, let's just kind of hop right in and see how quickly I panic because it is now June and I'm filming this June 21st and my birthday is on the 27th. So, panicking. So the first question is the best book that you've read so far and I'm gonna have to go with Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I read this basically in like a cup, like two sittings. <laughs> Oh, on my way back from I think Zion with my boyfriend in April. This is a YA hard-hitting contemporary following Young Enchanted who all she wants to do is be a singer. She wants to put all of her heart and soul into it but her parents want her to focus on school first. That is until one day she ends up meeting Corey Fields who is kind of this well-established R&B artist who decides that he's gonna now mentor enchanted to become a singer in her own right. However, his intentions aren't necessarily the most innocent. He hopped on my hamper to bug Nico who is currently sleeping on his bed on top of my jewelry box. And he couldn't figure out how to get down. He was like trying to put his like hind legs back and it's just, oh my sweet little boy. This was a very addicting read. I found myself wanting to read it and keep reading and just wanting to know exactly what happened next and what happened to Enchanted and just really find out exactly what happened, how to fix it, and how kind of Enchanted ends up kind of in the middle of this entire thing. Definitely one of my favorite books of 2021 is going to be up there. It'll definitely stay up there. However, trigger warnings, would you guys want to read this? It, the book does, con oh, it's more content warnings. The book does contain warnings on the front, but if you all are still hesitant and, don't, and like don't want to look it up for yourself. The content warnings that are given in this book are sexual abuse, rape, assault, child abuse, kidnapping, and addiction to opioids. But I highly recommend this book if you are in the right mindset. I believe I do have a review of this book so I will leave it linked down below for all of y'all who would like to read it. And it, it's spoiler free I believe so y'all should be able to go ahead and watch that video and not have to worry about it. Question number two is the best sequel that you read so far. I think I've only read no, this is not a lie, or another book. But the best sequel that I've read so far is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. And look, I got it right this time. But Chain of Iron is the sequel to Chain of Gold, and that is a spin-off series based from the that is based off of the children of the Infernal Devices. This follows young Cordelia Carstairs as she goes and, you know, does her thing, falls in love, and when she comes to London to visit. One of my favorite books of 2021. Again, I'll probably mention this at the end of the year, but this cover, it's such a controversial cover, mainly because of the moths. No one knows what to do with the moths, and I agree. The moths are an odd choice. It was odd. Cassandra Clare does so well with sequels, I will always trust her with sequels. Like, I will never be, tr like, surprised or concerned going into a sequel, because she writes them so well, she gives us all the plot twists and sets everything up for the third and final book. The character progression has gone like has transformed so many ways and like you get to see a lot of the characters flaws and their shortcomings while also seeing their the better parts of them. So one of my favorite, one of my favorite sequels of all time. Question number three is a new release that you're hoping to read but you haven't gotten to just quite yet and I'm gonna have to go with Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really want to buy this so terribly. Unfortunately, I don't remember if I put it on my Amazon wish list, and I can't go back and check to see if someone has bought it for me just quite yet. So I have to wait until after my birthday on Sunday before I can buy this book and and read it, which is kind of it's just a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, but this is Kisela Jenkins reads this new release. It just came out, I think, June fourth. I want to say. Contempt. It's an adult historical fiction novel, follow it kind of like following surfer surfer culture, following this set of siblings and sibling relationships. I believe this is based off of like Elvis's children. I want to say, but I'm not entirely sure, and I'll probably find out more when I get a chance to read the dang book. Question number four is, what is your most anticipated release? I'd have to say at the current moment, it's probably gonna be you've reached Sam, which comes out in September. You've reached Sam, looks like it's gonna be a very heartbreaking read and I'm not sure I'm ready for it just quite yet. Um, so basically, 
So basically, You've Reached Sam is a YA contemporary following this young girl who loses her boyfriend in a car accident. So in her kind of grief, she calls his phone to hear his voicemail, you know, hence the title, You Have Reached Sam. That is until she realizes that someone picks up and it's her boyfriend from the past who has not quite yet died. And now she has to figure out whether or not she wants to tell him what happened so she can avoid the inevitable loss in grief that she will have to face in the future or if she just kind of wants to stick it out and play it and watch the events unfold. It sounds really heartbreaking. I've heard about it from a few people now and I'm not ready. I am beyond not ready for this book. It looks really good and like I said, I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> but we're gonna deal with it and we're gonna try our hardest to be ready. Question five is biggest disappointment of so far and that's, that's not a surprise for anyone, y'all. I. It's not a surprise, and that is something in between by Melissa de la Cruz. This is a YA contemporary novel following young Jasmine Santos, as she's kind of done everything perfectly. Got the good grades, hasn't dated, hasn't... She's followed everything by the rules. That is until one day she receives a scholarship to basically give her a full ride to an Ivy League school on the East Coast, and she finds out that she cannot apply for said scholarship because she is an undocumented immigrant. I had high hopes for this, and I have... I will leave my wrap-up link down below so you guys will understand my pain but I had high hopes and I was sorely let down which is very very unfortunate so I no longer wish to discuss this book until I'm unhauling it in the future. Question 6 is biggest surprise and I'm gonna have to go with The Magicians by Love Grossman. This is an adult, cont uh, adult new adult, a uh, kind of fantasy novel, urban fantasy novel, following young Quentin Coldwater who is trying to get into graduate school or college I want to say and he is kind of in love with this fictional world called Fillory. Basically Narnia with a lot more demented aspects. That is until one day he finds out he is a magician and he can attend this school and be a magician. And there he finds out that Fillory is actually a real place. This was actually a really big surprise for me. I think I read this with I buddy read this with Helen, I think I want to say like back in March. I was super surprised. Um, I love the TV show. I still need to finish it, but I love the TV show. And I was worried getting into this that somehow the TV show would color my expectations or how I viewed the world. But I guess since Love Grossman was a consultant on the TV show, the book, there aren't a lot of differences between the book and the TV show. So it was like re be being re-invited back into the world just with like slight adjustments that made things different but still very interesting to read. It's definitely going to be a favorite of mine in 2021. It was a surprise for me so yeah. The next question is favorite new author and I actually have two though this can be either be debut or new to you and I have two. The first one is actually a debut author and that is Mia Fima and she wrote Arsenic and Adobo which is like a light thriller basically with lots of food and Filipinos Highly recommend this. I will also leave my wrap-up link down below so you guys will get a chance to see my thoughts on this, but I really like this. She is a, she has a talent and I cannot wait to see how the sequel, which is Halo Halo and Homicide, will turn out. The next favorite is actually a new to me author and that was, well, new-ish. I follow them on Twitter. I haven't had a chance to read their books until recently, so technicalities. But that is Rin Chepeko. They wrote The Bone Witch, and this is a YA high fantasy novel following kind of like necromancers almost, set in an almost Studio Ghibli slash kind of geisha world. Love this book. I love this book. I have a spoiler-free video review on it, so I will also leave that link down below for all of y'all. But I love Rin Chepeko's writing. I will be picking up the second book in the soonish future. And then continuing on with the rest of the work that they have released since then. Question 8 is newest fictional crush and I'm not lying when I say I kind of don't have one. I guess if we're gonna go, no, cause no, no, cause no one from Chain of Iron is new. So I can't say that. Yeah, I don't really have a new fictional crush and yeah. Question number 9 is newest favorite character and I'm gonna have to go with Ox from Wolf Song by TJ Kloon. Ox is a precious little bean of a boy. I love him. I will protect him. Ox is from Wolfsong, which is a paranormal romance with lots of werewolves, and they're gay. So what more can you want? TB and I read this for a buddy read a couple months ago, and I just love it. 
so so much i love them i love ox and i need to finish uh, continue on with the rest of the series but the first book was such a whirlwind that i'm high key terrified to keep reading because what else do you have for me what else can you hurt me with Question 10 is a book that made you cry. I'm going to have to go with Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins. This is an adult contemporary novel following this newly married couple who's like literally been married for like seven days, ten days. That is until one day her husband takes her bike and goes on a bike ride to get more cereal and he is hit by a car and dies on impact. This leaves our main character kind of in a a little bit of a tizzy trying to figure out how the proper way I guess to grieve someone whom you've only been married to for like not even double digits and whom you've only known for like six months. That is until her mother-in-law who has no idea she even exists let alone is married to her son shows up and now they have to traverse this very complicated grieving process together. I didn't expect this book to make me cry. I gave support not because it was bad but because I feel like there's always some some some, some missing from Taylor Jenkins reads more backlisted works but I cried during re like reading this book like genuinely I cried. There were so many instances where it was like Elsie learned a lesson about loving and how you can't measure that through time only through really feelings and I was like a sobbing mess and like there was just a lot of there was a lot of lessons and I don't know the, it doesn't help that the main character her love interest Ben reminds me just a, just, a sm just a smidgen bit of my partner so it was like like if I were to vocalize the feeling <laughs> Of potentially losing my partner in such a horrific way, which like it should never happen, but you know. Question eleven is a book that made you happy. Wolf Song by T.J. Klune. It was just so cute. Like it was literally vibes until you hit like thirty percent of the book, and it was all just depression. And then the last bit made you super happy, and it just made me happy that they were happy. But I was depressed and upset for like a good probably. 60% of the book. It probably wasn't like sound math, but I can't math, so we're going to deal with it. Question 12 is what is the prettiest book cover you own or have like bought or received? And I'm going to have to go with Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. It's like, it's kind of like, we, we all had issues with the moths. The moths were an issue, but I love kind of the haunting colors of like the yellow, the very like Oh, uh, yeah, I guess a very pale yellow and the very like light blue that kind of brings up that contrast and I feel like it's very apt for the book so I really enjoy that bit but I'm still not very sold on the moths. Question 13 is what books you need to read by the end of the year. I'm gonna have to go with a handful. The Lost Mage by Ben Alderson, Lord of the Night by Ben Alderson because that's coming out in September as well, Mexican Gothic, Plain Bad Heroines, These Violent Delights. I have a myriad of books. And then finally, question 14 is what are some who are some of your favorite booktubers? I'm just gonna highlight everyone from the group chat. So that is Armin from Armin Reads, Andre, Leah, Connor, Charlotte, TB, Lisa, Helen, Michaela, Louisa, just everyone. I will leave all their channels linked down below for all of y'all. If you want to check them out, I highly recommend it. They're all very entertaining people to watch. But that is it for this this video. Very fun video to do. I love doing it every year. So if you guys haven't done this video just quite yet, I will leave the original creators down below. And then the questions as well if you guys want to check that out. But until next time, hit like, subscribe, comment, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. So hopefully you guys are having a wonderful week. But if not, hopefully the week gets better for you. Bye.